Well, we have a little problem. Not a problem. We have a difference in discrepancy and they actually kind of all find the leaks. But when you're using one of these, they're very sensitive to ambient sounds too. There's certain frequencies of ambient sounds that can set them off. Like you see right now. They actually don't like the sound. Right here you have a vacuum pump inside this unit and it's sucking a vacuum right through this little hole right here. Do not have any open vacuum sources. A lot of cars have vacuum bleeds on them for sensors. And if you're doing automotive, you have all these little vacuum operated ports and sensors and bleed ports that are all over the place. If you don't know that's your problem, you'll get very frustrated at this ultrasonic leak detector. Um, and it's not the leak detector's fault that has the problem. I'll just say that. It's just a lack of knowledge. As you can see, let's see, do you hear? I'm gonna put you down by my, uh, where's my microphone? I'm gonna put the microphone right here and listen. That's the speaker I was playing out. I was putting my phone down by the speaker or the microphone. So this works off of a vacuum pump. There's a vacuum leak. The tip of this is a vacuum pump. There's a vacuum pump inside here and it's sucking vacuum. So don't have these on while you're trying to use this. So I'm gonna use the H10. I found the leak. And it is up right in this corner, right where the copper tubing comes out. And uh, let me focus it. Damn, I'm trying to do this. Okay, now it doesn't want to find it. Yeah, I turned on the camera and it doesn't want to find it, great. So the H10 picked it up right away and I cannot repeat it while the camera is on. Let's try out here. Yeah, smooth move. Ah, oh, there it goes. Just as I was pulling away. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but the H10 picks it up no problem. The Stratus picks it up no problem. Now let me get it out of telephoto because it's too hard for me to maneuver around using telephoto. Let's get that in there. And yes, I do know I have it in cloud honey mode. Then, now I steam cleaned this yesterday or pressure washed it and degreased it. I have UV dye in here because I put it in the other day when I initially fired it up. So here's the UV light. You can't see it because it has a filter on the end. And I need to kill the light. Hold on, let me see if I can put my finger over the... I cannot have the bright light from the camera of the phone shining on there when I try to do this. But, there's a little glow right there. You see that little glow? That's remnants of dye that was left there from the other day. And even after I put Viper Coil Cleaner and I pressure washed this two times, there's still a little tiny remnant. I actually need to run this unit again, again to make that, uh, Yeah, it's not going to the camera very well. And it's almost impossible to get up there. And the light, I have to do this. I have to do uh, this camera test. I have to kill the light on the camera. I cannot have this light on there while I'm doing it unless it was a really large amount. So it doesn't matter which one I use. This one is a little, a little more difficult and getting the focus of the camera and getting the light at the right angle for me to see where the dye is is too difficult to do on the camera but these all range in prices from $500 to $500 plus dollars to $23 
Uh, some work better than others. Yes, the $500 one does work really good. Uh, but for surprising enough, the $23 one, uh, they, they range between $23 to $28 or so. Some places will sell them on. This is Convoy. This, this is amazingly uh, really good at UV leak detection. And so is the UV Beast. Uh, this one's like $78. Has three batteries inside. Uh, you can unscrew this and only use two batteries to make it short, like a little short guy. It'll be about right here. This is the extension that I put on there that has a third battery in it. So let's kill these noises because the ultrasonic leak detector does not like. There it goes. Now it's quiet. So let me put my headpiece on. And let me put it up there so you can see it. That's just, that's just me touching it. That's interference. If you touch anything with the tip, you get that. Okay, that was me touching it. That's me touching it. Now, as I talk, you see, if my hand rubs on here, you'll get frustrated with the readings. If my elbow rubs on this, just this, you see that? That is my elbow rubbing on, just touching this a little bit, sends this sensor crazy. So a lot of you guys will get very frustrated. These are very finicky. You have to adjust your human senses and your motions and your hand-eye coordination and know when you have bumped something or your elbow or external noise can set these off. Uh, but they are really good in certain situations. So this is a situation where this is difficult to get. Now this is R134 and without sticking my pressure gauges on here because of the ambient temperature and this is sitting outside overnight, I'm gonna say the pressure in the system is about 65 PSI. So let's say you wanted to pressure test this and maybe use the ultrasonic and you couldn't get it to leak. With some refrigerant in it, you might want to pump the system up with some nitrogen up to 150 PSI. And you might get it to work better. But as we see here, the UV dye can see a little trace from its running because I put UV dye in here a couple of days ago and I ran it. But I did do a Viper pressure wash twice on this because it was so dirty. And I could see remnants of it. I'm going to run it again just because I want to, because I didn't have this apart looking for the leak. Um, the H10 found it with no problem. When I flicked on the video, it had a problem. Uh, and so did the Stratus. The Stratus found it with no problem. And this is R134. And so all of these will find it, but I'm suspecting that I probably have to pump the system up with just a little trace amount of refrigerant with... Um, nitrogen if I wanted to find it possibly easier because I, I did have somewhat of a problem finding I did I was scanning this whole system I've been going really crazy over this entire system trying to find this leak it took two years to leak down um, but this one might need help with a little more pressure from the nitrogen now it might need help if I turn the system on and the evaporator gets cold and it drops down to say 28 degrees or so and the metal and the contraction of either the leak point or a joint or anything like that or a crack well when the metal 
gets cold, maybe it opens up a little bit more when it only gets cold. And maybe this will find it really easy. So it's one of those situations where you have to know the right tool and the right technique to find the right leak in the right situation. Not all leaks are created equal. And sometimes UV dye won't work at all. And as we see here, no matter where I hold this, even with the extension tube, it doesn't make, make a difference. I know where the leak is. Uh, this one at this moment doesn't pick it up as easily as these picked it up. But there's other situations where I've made videos where this made it really easy to find a leak when these had a problem finding the leak. So there are those scenarios and I double check this by, I find it with this and then I go to my vehicle and I grab this and I put it right at the leak and maybe it doesn't find the leak, but this finds the leak. Maybe I put the bl uh, big blue there and I see almost nothing from the big blue, but this finds it really good. You find many different scenarios where sometimes leaks are intermittent and they just don't leak at the time that you are testing. But of course, when you walk away, put it in operation a week later or a day later, it starts leaking again. It's not just a limitation of the technician. It's not just a limitation of the tools you use. It's the operating condition at what specific pressure, temperature, vibration causes the leak. Because there's leaks that only leak on pressurizing up or temperature rise. Then there's other leaks that only leak when dropping in pressure or dropping the material uh, as they contract or expand and then they only leak and then there's ones only when you shut them off they leak when you turn them back on they don't or like semi-hemetic compressors where you have a lip seal on a shaft you have leaks that when you turn the system off the shaft seal stops leaking when the shaft starts rotating out the lip seal from the compressor to the electric motor it starts leaking only when the shaft is spinning but often you might have disturbances of other noises and wind sources and fans and stuff like that. So getting a leak tester at a shaft while it's spinning is not one as dangerous sometimes, but also you have air blowing over it. So even when you put your leak detector right up to a lip seal of a shaft, you pick up nothing. So you have to know your tools, its limitations, the technician and the series of operation at the time of a leak test. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how good your tests are. If it's not leaking at that time, it's not leaking. All right, guys. See you later.